So just what is wet fly fishing? Well, it's very simple. In fact, the simplest fly fishing there is. We cast a lifelike fly downstream across the current at a 45 degree angle. Then we mend the line upstream. The fly swings on a tight line just under the surface. The trick is to get the fly to swing naturally right into the trout's feeding lane. Not too fast, not too slow. When fish take, there we go. There's no need to set the hook. The fish hook themselves. It's tempting to set the hook, but any jerking of the line can pull the hook out of the fish's mouth or bend the light wire hook used for wet flies. It takes patience and practice to let the fish do the work. Whoops, there he goes. In wet fly fishing, the key to a good swing is proper line mending. When you're mending line, you have to affect the drift of the fly. And one area where a lot of guys struggle is not mending the line to affect the drift. One thing I see a lot is a lot of anglers will only mend the first portion of their line. That doesn't do anything to the fly. At this point, the fly is still going to be swimming across the current far too fast and unnatural looking to the fish. So when you mend, we want this fly to be drifting downstream with the current, mend the entire fly line, and then I'll hold the rod up high, I'm still in contact with the fly, and then I can complete the swing. If you only mend the first portion of the line, then you still end up with a large belly in the line like this and the fly is going to be swimming unnaturally and too quick. How do you find the upper ground? <laughs> <laughs> There's no, uh, no lack of fish. Well, we're having lots of luck today. We're just getting them, banging them one after the other. They like this little orange fly. So I was following uh, Rob's advice here, I've learned to mend to get a nice straight line in my drift and I'm finding most of the fish are taking the fly at the bottom of the drift towards the end of the swing, which is what you'd expect. What happens as uh, the fly hits the end of the swing, it rises a bit in the water column, uh, tends to uh, uh, represent an insect emerging in the water yep. column and they take it on that mm -hmm. move because it, it, again, the same old story in, uh, as always in fly fishing. It's about imitating something that's alive. And if they think it's alive, they're going to go Just for it. Just give me a little more slack and yeah. lift the rod tip. There we go. There we go. There's another one. They're beautiful little silver fish. Little rainbows. The great thing about drift boat fishing on a river like this is you can get out of the boat, especially on a hot day like today, get out in your waders, wade into the river, and catch fish that way as well. It's really refreshing. I was getting very, very hot in the sun, now I'm cooled off completely, and I'm catching fish here too. I'm getting lots of takes here, right at the end of the swing, but they're uh, they're being a little finicky. One of the great things about this uh, wet fly technique is that the fish really hook themselves. If you swing the fly properly through the water, keep tension on your line so that there's no slack in the line, at the bottom of that swing the fish take that wet fly and they hook themselves. They turn, the fly goes into the corner of their mouth and away you go. You have a fish on, you can fight it. You know, when you're wet fly fishing, you can almost anticipate when you're going to get a fish because when you have a perfect drift, when the line is perfectly straight, when you have good tension on the line and the fly is swinging through the water perfectly, more often than not, you get a take if there are fish in the area. There's a fish, right on the drift. Great, another rainbow, yeah, great. I'll bring this guy in here. Uh, he doesn't want to come in. Come on. Whoops. There we go. 
Oh, he let himself go. There you go. That makes it easy. Beautiful little rainbow. Now I'm going to make a few more steps and cover some more water and see if we can get another one that way. We started out with the partridge and orange, which is a soft tackle fly that incorporates the soft tackles of hens and other uh, birds with some flash in them in the form of a rib or peacock curl. And then we moved to a, a slightly larger, more full, fully dressed red tab. The partridge and orange uh, worked well this morning, but when it started to fail us, we then switched. A soft tackle flies, or any wet fly for that matter, doesn't necessarily have to represent any one thing in the water column, but it can also represent a lot of different things. The partridge and orange or the partridge and green may represent an emerging caddis. These red tabs or uh, red brassies here will also imitate an emerging caddis, but they can imitate anything from mayfly emergers to salmon fry for that matter. These flies are more hair or more feather wing uh, wet flies and again they can they can take on the form of mayflies, caddis flies, stone flies, small bait fish imitation, salmon fry, so on uh, and really give you a lot of versatility. You don't have to be species specific when you're fishing these flies. The movement from the hackles and the feathers is really what is going to entice a fish to take. As Norm's demonstrated today, fishing the swing with wet flies is very simple to do. It's a great way to get started in trout fishing. I've enjoyed it over the years. There's no reason that anybody can't pick up a floating line and an eight or nine foot leader and go out and give this a try. My favorite wet fly of all is the classic partridge and orange. It's simple to tie. The hook is a medium weight, size 14 to size 18 wet fly hook. The body is orange silk over orange tying thread. The rib is fine gold wire. The soft hackle shoulder is a mottled brown partridge feather. Simple but deadly. Another great fly we use today is the red tag, also called the red tab. It's tied on a lightweight size 8 to 18 hook. The body is just brown thread covered with peacock curl. The tail is a tuft of red wool, and the neck hackle is a ginger or brown soft hen feather, another simple but deadly pattern. If the orange and partridge doesn't work for you, switch to the red tag. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time, so if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.